Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ingram Micro Senior Vice President of Commercial Markets and Global Sales, Kirk Robinson. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the 2013 Spring SMB Invitational. I also want to let you know this is a virtual event, and we have 150 or more and climbing partners joining us virtually. So for those of you virtually, welcome. So about three months ago, we were challenged as Ingram Micro executives to give a TED Talk at our North American kickoff. How many of you are familiar with the TED conferences? Okay, a fair amount. For, for those of you who aren't, TED is, I believe, it's technology, entertainment, and design conferences. And there's a great app if you have an iPad or other. Uh, I highly encourage you to go out and look at these great presentations on a host of subjects. My subject was, who inspires me? And the team asked me, hey, can you do that presentation at SMB that you did at the North America kickoff? And at first, I was thinking, well, you know, it's a personal story. I'm not sure if it's the right fit. But then I started thinking about it. And I was like, all right, I think, I think there's a lot of synergy here. So I'll ask you, who inspires you? For me, it's my older brother, Scott Robinson. So I grew up in Long Island, New York, three older brothers. Scott was my next oldest, and then Mark and Greg. And one area in life that my brother Scott didn't necessarily excel in was school. Just really wasn't his thing. But when he got to high school, there was one class where he really excelled, and that was shop. When he got to high school, everything in his room was handmade his dresser, his bed frame where he had storage underneath, he had a couch in his room, he had a coffee table, and everything had a nautical theme. He was a big surfer, surfed all the time, surfed in the winter in New York, he had a dry suit, he was crazy. And I remember on his coffee table, he had a little porthole from a boat, and there was a picture of a surfer where the glass was. And it wasn't until a few years later I realized why he had the picture there. And I don't even know if my parents know today. It was so that you didn't look through the glass and see an ice chest of assorted beverages all throughout high school. So he was very creative. <laughs> one, other, one other area that he excelled in, in using his hands in building things was when he was 14 years old, he ended up building this little six or seven foot boat in our basement. And I remember the day my dad took us out to Oyster Bay, put the boat in the water with my brother in it, gave him a little shove, and, and I, I kept thinking, please don't let this thing sink. You know, he put his heart and soul into this. And sure enough, that little boat didn't take on a drop of water. He fired up that little you know, 1945 horsepower engine and cruised all over. And, and I'll never forget the smile and the pride on his face. So my brother makes it through high school, kind of skin of the teeth. Couple years of working on his own, doing handyman stuff, he gets a call from a friend who says, hey, we're building some condos out in Newport Beach in California. Why don't you come out? Brother says, hey, seen surf magazines, they have good surf out there, why not? Puts all his belongings in his van, packs up, drives out to California. Well, he gets there and he goes to this job site and there's nobody there. The money had fallen through. So here he is with a little bit of money in his back pocket, standing on a hill with no job. But he looks out and he sees the Newport Beach Marina and all the boats. And he says, hmm, all right, I think I could probably find some work down there. So he goes down there, ends up becoming a deckhand, befriending these people. He's going out on sailboat races. He ends up sailing around the world. He's out on yachts. In the meantime, he goes to the local community college and starts taking electrical classes, thinking, hey, I want to be more handy on these boats. I want to keep doing this. Learns to work on the engines. And then at one point, he says, I want to be a boat captain. I want to be the guy taking these boats all over. So for 20 years, 
my brother was a boat captain. The whole time, he's out on these boats, variety of boats and brands, taking them all over. He's meticulously taking notes. What does he like? What does he, what does he not like? Because he always had this dream. He always wanted to be the boat builder. He wanted his own company. So one night, he's on a yacht, heading down to Mexico. He's up on the bridge with one of the owners of the boats, and he's telling him his dream. Now, this guy's in the oil business and has a lot of money. He took a liking to my brother and said, well, how much do you need? And my brother said, probably about a million dollars. I need a million dollars to get this thing started. He had built a 55-foot sailboat in Taiwan with some friends and sailed it from Taiwan to Seattle years ago. So he knew a yard in Taiwan that he could build this boat. He said, I need the million so I can go start the yard and build the molds. And I want to build 84 to 94-foot yachts. So the guy says, I'm in. I'm going to lend you the million dollars, but the first boat's mine. You're going to pay me back the million out of the price on the first boat. So my brother says, all right, I'm sold. So I'm proud to say that today, my brother is the CEO of Paragon Motor Yachts. And he started this company eight years ago, and he builds 84 foot, and now he currently has 104 foot, his first boat over 100 feet. He's been on the cover of magazine, uh, Yachting Magazine, well, he has and his boat has. He's been on the cover of Yachting Magazine. He's won best in class in multiple boat shows. But I think the interesting thing is, I've always worked for big companies. I have 20 years at Ingram, worked for big companies before. My brother has never worked for anybody but himself. So when we go out and catch a beer and catch up and talk business, it's interesting conversations of my challenges versus his. And that's where I, I thought this may fit. Because I think of the conversations with many of you around your business. And he didn't just start this, and he's not successful because of himself. Yes, he had the vision, but it was his choice of partnering. When he first knew he was getting the money, he went out and he found a retired naval architect to help him with the blueprints for these boats. He had to find someone to help him with the interior decorations on these boats. He had to find a host of other people, partners, to help him be successful. So, like many of you, my brother had the vision. He had the passion. And he had the courage to go for it. But it's all about who you partner with and where you find your success. So I'm up here today. My ask of all of you is to look to Ingram Micro to be that indispensable business partner. Right now, your customers are thirsty for knowledge, and they're looking to you, their trusted IT advisor, to help them understand the cloud, mobility, infrastructure, all these other technologies and solutions. And when we talk to you, we often hear, I'm wearing so many hats. You know, I'm the CEO, the CFO, I, I gotta go close the deals, I'm the janitor, all these things. Well, you see our marketing. Let us wear the hats that you can't. We want to be your indispensable business partner, and we know we have to earn it every day. But I have confidence in myself and my team that we will be the distributor of choice in the SMB market, because we're going to work hard to earn your business. So over the course of the next couple of days, we have a lot of presenters, a lot of great information. Take all that in. Reach out to any of us on the team and help us understand what your needs are and how Ingram, Fortune 100 company, 40 billion plus company, can help you reach your dreams and grow your company more profitably.